you so much, man. Thank you. Well, Pleasure. Yeah, everyone's giving you a virtual round of applause right now. <laughs> oh, that's very kind. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mark McLean, uh, a few things about you. I did some research. Okay. Uh, I just want to introduce you. Tell me if I'm wrong with any of these. You've played with... Uh, Oscar Peterson? Yes. Andrea Bocelli? Correct. Billy Joel? Yes. Quincy Jones? Yes. Anna Kroll? Yes. Wynton Marsalis? Yes. Uh, you were also featured at the Montreal Drum Festival in 2010. Yeah, that is all correct. Yes. And you have an uh, album out uh, from 2010 called Mark McLean's Playground. That is, yes. Which is available on iTunes. It is available on iTunes, yes. Cool. And you are here to teach us some drums. Ouch. Can you guys believe it? <laughs> wow, well. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you so much. No, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Yeah, um, so Mark's actually been living in New York for the past 13 years. Yes. And he's 22 years old. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, I think this lesson, it's, it's on the musical approach to drumming. Yes. And uh, a quote on your website, which is great for this lesson, is you said, uh, I don't want to be seen as a drummer. I only want to be known as a musician whose instrument just happens to be drums. Exactly. And yes. I think that's... Uh, yeah, that's so uh, perfect for your style of playing and your outlook from what I'm seeing here. And so it's going to be a fun lesson. So if you guys out there now, go ahead and get your questions in. Otherwise, let's just kind of uh, jump right into it. First, what songs were those exactly? Were they both from your album? Yes, actually. That was the, uh, the first tune you heard was uh, entitled Everything is Beautiful. Okay. And that's from the Playground record. And uh, the second tune was from the same album, and it's called Wheelhouse. Cool. Yes. Yeah, and I just, I got the album like, Probably an hour and a half before this lesson, and I, I listened through it, and so it's so good. So you guys got to check it out. It's on iTunes. Just search. I just searched Mark McLean, and it came up. Uh, okay, so let's get into the the lesson here. Now you, you've given me a layout, but this is there's sure some people are asking before like where is there sheet music? I'm like no, there's no exercises because we're talking about how to approach drumming musically. Yes. And yes. so the first <laughs> thing you wrote here is mental approach. Now what does that exactly mean? Yeah. Well, for me, it's it's a different. Uh, well, this is my approach. My first instrument is actually piano. Okay. So I kind of grew up playing classical piano. Yeah. When I was about 13 or 14, I went to uh, junior high. We had to choose band instruments, so I chose percussion. Yeah. But I feel whenever I sit down at a drum kit, I still think of it as a, more of a melodic instrument yeah. than a rhythmic instrument. Okay. Um, when I'm, um, you know, the piano is a very visual instrument to play, and right. the same thing with drums. So when I when I think of a tune, like if someone wants me to learn music, I'm not just thinking about what the drum beat is. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about what's the melody, what's the harmony, yeah. what's the form of the tune. Mm -hmm. And once I know those elements, like we don't always have this opportunity. Sometimes you have to just jump into a tune and do it. Right. But once I have those elements, I could sort of, it, it allows me to structure the tune in a certain way. Yeah. You know, and just sort of, you know, build it. You yeah. know, knowing the musical approach and, you know, sometimes if I know the melody of the tune, that sort of helps me to, to not you know, get in the way of the, the saxophone player or the right. singer who's doing it. So uh, a, part, a lot of it is just thinking about the tune and, and knowing what's happening yeah. and knowing where I am in the tune at all times. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And so you're not even necessarily talking as much about creating melodies on the toms or the snare drum. You're more talking about just not, well, well playing something that complements the melody in the song. Right? Yes, for yeah. sure. You know, and obviously there's, there's times to step out and, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes, you know, when it comes time to solo, I'll, I'll, I will take elements of the melody yeah. and toss it in there. Or, where, you know, I'm, just, I'm always listening. Yeah. I'm always listening. So and if I'm playing in a jazz quartet and I hear something that the, the piano player does and then I hear something that the bass player does in his solo, and then we get, you know, I'm going to try to maybe incorporate some of those elements. Yeah. And that, that keeps it fresh and exciting for me. Yeah, it's very reactive then, right? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's just it's, it's reactive drumming, you know. And the, you know, and there's a time when I'm not so reactive when I yeah. just kind of, you know, you got to throw throw down and. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's reactive and just trying to, you know, just creating melodies and building off of that. Yeah. And so, how do you think you got to that point or that realization? Like, did did it just all of a sudden happen, or or like where was the the paradigm shift or from when you you were playing piano, then you started playing drums, and then you started having this this. Uh, this sort of mindset, mental approach. This mindset, I think I'll, I'll have to credit a lot of it to playing with vocalists. Yeah. To be honest, because it's a different, uh, you know, it's a different sensibility when you're playing with a vocalist. Yeah. You know, or or, or even just say like an acoustic piano trio. Yeah. You know, I, I realize that I have to, you know, if I play too loud, I'm going to bury the piano player. Mm -hmm. So, but I realized actually, I toured with Joe Sample for mm -hmm. a long, t for about a year, year and a half, and he would always say, you know. You know, make sure you're, you know, if I'm playing a certain dynamic or a certain intensity on the piano, 
make sure you're matching that intensity mm -hmm. on on the ride cymbal or whatever drum you're playing. Okay. And I, I've I've taken that I've taken a lot of that experience with me, and it's really helped me in the in the trio setting, and beyond. But I, I realize that you know if a piano is playing a certain way or a certain intensity, if I can find a way to match that intensity, yeah. you know, it really brings a groove. Like that way, we kind of build together, we swell together. Yeah. A lot of it's a lot of it's listening. Now, when I was first learning this, it, it's tough. It's tough because you know I was in my my drum habits. You know, I yeah. played a certain way and. So to actually have to think about, okay, let me think about this dynamic and this sort of bringing up, you know, I'm playing the hi-hat like this, yeah. eighth notes for it with him. And then it's time to get, get, build a little bit of intensity. I might get there, right? Yeah. And then if he starts, then I'll open a little bit just to get that, just those, just those little subtleties within the groove. Yeah. I think uh, that that's helped me a long way playing with whoever. It just helps build. And I was really conscious of it when I was working on it because yeah. we were, we were, I was sort of learning these lessons uh, on the road, you know, like in sound check, you, you know, you get talked to afterwards and then you, you try to make it better. And, yeah. and now I don't, I don't think I think about it as much because it's ingrained. Yeah. You know, it's just like practicing your rudiments or whatever, you know, yeah. when you're practicing, you sort of think about it and then after a while you, you just kind of... It becomes a part of your... Exactly. Your yeah, yeah. I think that's right, right what you said. It's, it's changing the little things and, and the subtleties. Uh, and this is something we, because uh, I'm in mar into marketing business as well. Sure. But they say it's n it's rarely about you know changing one big thing. So if I if I'm personally having problems with my playing, it's not about like the one thing that I need to change. It's probably about the thousand little things that I need to change. There's a lot of little things. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's totally correct. You know, you're just playing the hi hat just to make a slight subtle change to the the, the edge of the stick and the edge of the hi hat adds that whole different dynamic. So yeah, because sometimes you'd be playing with somebody and the producer would be like, ah, something's not really you know right in the feel here yeah you know and it's it's like you know mark can you can you do can you do something different and you know you know a long time ago my reaction would be like oh maybe i should just you know just play a different pattern or maybe play up on the ride but then if yeah. you i realize i'm like well maybe it's just you know, maybe it's maybe it's something as simple as maybe not playing eighth notes on i hat and playing chord notes and just yeah. and, and you just do that and be like yeah do that and it's like okay Cool. Yeah, cool. so it's, you know. Cool. Okay, so next here you had practical approach and you wrote down blueprint. Now, blueprint. Okay. Yeah, when I when I have to learn a tune, yeah. um, I think that um, I, I try to get to what what's really driving the groove of the tune. Like mm -hmm. what is the what's at the foundation of this tune which makes it go. So, um, I used to study with Kenny Washington in New York and he he talked about the blueprint. Yeah. He, and he said if you have if you bring in three drummers, so let's say you bring in Vinny Caliuta, uh, Brian Blade, and uh, let's say, uh, I'm blanking on all these great drummers. Carter Bulford? Carter Bulford, all right. He's one of my favorites. Uh, there you go. So. He's good. He's sca he scared the hell out of me when I first uh, oh, really? saw that band play. I, I was like, wow, okay. Talk about playing with a vocalist, because that's where I learned all the little things he does on his hi-hats that go with uh, Dave, oh. Dave's vocal. It's just so tasty. Yeah, that's a beautiful marriage between yeah. like, what's going Love on between it. those two. Right. But, uh, okay, so we have Carter yeah. and uh, those two other, you know, Brian and Vinny. Yeah. And if you say they were going to come in and play a tune, say it's like a, a blues or whatever, or a funk tune, yeah. they, are, they, they, they will all bring their signature sound to it. But I think at the root of it all, what Kenny was saying is there, there, there are going to be a lot of common elements that are helping to drive uh, the music forward. Yeah. You know? So he says what you need to do is you know, find that blueprint you know, of the music figure out what's happening in the groove, and then from there, you know, all the taste and stuff like that, you know, will you put that on top. He said the drummer is the interior decorator okay. of the band, you know, yeah. so. So define, like, as far as blueprint, then, in one of the songs you played, what is the blueprint, let's say, in the second song? What would you consider to be the blueprint as far as the drum? drum okay, band? yeah. The blueprint in that one, uh, Wheelhouse, I can play, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like, the main, the, the main groove is... For me, like I like, um, you know, if I was going to put a hi hat part to this, like I, I sort of chose the more, uh, more of a rigid type of drum machine type of approach. I went. Right, but maybe I might not do that. I might maybe just do like more of a eighth notes, but maybe accent the uh, quarters. Yeah. Right. 
or maybe I might want to play like more, maybe more rigid eighth notes, but play on the hi hat. the same thing this is just common and, and I was throwing in some ghost notes there and, yeah. and everyone has their, their way of doing ghost notes and maybe they'll put like a little ornament on the symbol yeah. so I guess that's what I mean by blueprint does that, does that make yeah, sense? yeah yeah so okay, you're saying because cool. I wouldn't have guessed that you're saying so that the kick and the snare in that particular instance was the blueprint and then you're decorating with the hi-hat part there. yeah so cool. yeah, in sort of accent I'm sort of catching the melody in some of those things yeah and, but yeah like I don't know how anybody else would play. That's how I played it. Yeah, you know. that's great. I love the I love the subtleties. This that's like what I'm into so much now because I so uh, in my history it's all technical exercises, technique, and that sort of thing. But when mm. I look at drummers like you, it's like you play the same thing as me, and it sounds so much better. And so oh, I'm really into I'm into, into like trying to dissect that. I know it's not as easy because it's not easy to learn or teach. This is what we were talking about before, but it's still really fun to to talk about. Oh, so. no, absolutely. Cool, okay, so uh, you also said, what is everyone listening for in the big picture? What, what are those? Okay, yeah, well, when I'm playing different styles, I, I try to figure out, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, like, what, what, what does the singer need from me to, uh, actually, let's start from the bottom. Let's, okay. What does the bass player need from me in order to, hang, to lock in with me really well yeah. to support, you know, what's going on out front? So, you know, if I'm in a jazz setting, like, I know you know, the bass player is usually going to be on my right because yeah. he needs to hear the ride cymbal, right? Yeah. So he's sort of locking to like... Yeah. Most of my business in a jazz setting is going to be up here. Yeah. You know, if I'm in a, um, you know, let's say, if I'm in a bigger jazz setting, like a big band, like the bass player is still going to be there, but uh, the, the ensemble, they need uh, to feel, you know, not hear, but really feel the quarter note pulse of the kick drum. Okay. You know, so I might just lay... Big, you know, it's a big band, right? So I'm just kind of feathering. You know, in the trio setting, I'll just be like. You know, it's all coming off the cymbal. Right? So in a, when I'm in, in a pop setting, um, and this is, these are just my, you know, this no, is different great. for everybody, that's but great, yeah. in pop setting, you know, I'm usually going to have the bass player on this side, yeah. and I feel like he's really locking to my hi-hat most yeah. of the time, so. All right, and I find in a funk setting, an R&B setting for me, like, I'm really conscious of, like, my kick and snare, yeah. what's happening. I know the bass player, everyone wants to feel that one, yeah. so I'm really... I'm sort of really, I'm sort of anchoring, anchoring with the kick and snare, like really letting the, the, the backbeat sit and, uh, you know, I'm playing time on the hi-hat, but I might, I try to free it up to decorate a little bit more. Yeah. So like. Trying to, yeah, and people like you know, people have that thing that they lock to, and I feel like that kind of, you know, brings everybody together. Yeah. Because we have we have those common elements, and then I think that just kind of that helps create the big picture. Yeah. You know, which you know the singer, you know, everyone's feeling the groove. Singer or the lead lead player can like play, and it's you know, I think that's what we all want. You know. Yeah, like, it's great to get a different perspective because I come from like pop rock background, so for me it's like. I never even think about okay from the jazz setting the bass the bass player is going to lock in with the ride like I never even consider that yeah the ride and you know he'll, he'll be you know a little bit of hi hat too yeah. oh yeah for sure yeah. like that's 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 the uh, yeah. yeah most of the business in jazz in the yeah. straight ahead jazz is on the the ride and the hi hat with the foot yeah. that's really really cool cool um, subtleties within the hi hat bass drum and feel oh okay yeah. Um, yeah actually I did a little bit just now when I was talking yeah. with the hi hat you know yeah. like whether I want to play like uh, straight eighth notes okay. or uh, you know just sort of accent but sometimes with the bass line um, I'm sure I can demonstrate this with the yeah. tune but um, before I do that there's a tune uh, I wrote called Sugar Bones okay. and it's a very um, the bass line is like boom, boo, da, ba, ba, doom, ba, boo, da. All right? yeah. 
but Buddha. So I figured, you know, sometimes if I, if I hear a bass line like that, there's a couple different ways I can play. I could sort of play maybe one in three, like just... Or I could I could lock right with it like right. or sometimes I'll try to come up with like a a counterpoint line yeah. to that, you know. I'm really into Bach actually on the piano. Okay. All those all those Bach inventions and there'd be like something happening. Yeah. So I sort of with this one I had that bass line, boom Buddha, ba ba doom, ba Buddha, and I kinda of played against it. But at the same time, I would lock into with it at certain points. Mm -hmm. So it was like. You know, it was just kind yeah, of. Not every single one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Well, let's try that song. Now uh, I know everyone's going to want to hear Yeah, yeah. So. It'd but, be easier because yeah, I was yeah. going to try to sing the bass line and play counterpoint. But <laughs> no, that, let's, let's hear that it. That was going to end badly. The All right. Playing uh, better. I'll play this for you. I need a balance, I'm not talking about the distribution of my daily bread. I need balance, I'm not talking about the state of mind. Because when you walk in, life begins. And I know that you know I'm in trouble. I need balance because I can't stand up. And I, I, I've always loved the whole ride to hi hat type thing. Cool. Yeah, I kind of like that feeling. Yeah. You know? I don't know how I stumbled onto that, but yeah, yeah no, I think I, I probably saw somebody do it. And <laughs> yeah. 
stole what? from someone. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, very cool. Cool. So let's uh, go into some brush stuff. Okay. Now, yeah, especially Ken Infanti, one of the, the Yamaha guys here, before he was asking me if I've ever seen you do brushes. Okay. Because he was just like in awe of your brush technique. So I definitely want to talk a little bit about this, how you approach it musically, and, uh, and then you also have a song. With brushes or something. Oh or a, a yeah, quick I, track. I, yeah. I could, you know, I'll play a little bit out in front of it, and I'll, yeah. I'll trigger this little track from it's uh, from the record. Also, cool. it's called Tango Palace. So yeah, cool. Okay, so brushes. When when would you say you would choose to use brushes uh, in a musical setting as opposed to sticks? Like, a, what what does that the, the songwriter that makes that choice? Or? Yeah. Well, it's funny. In um, yeah, the songwriter has a say. Yeah. But usually, it's funny if I'm in a jazz setting like backing up a singer, like, I'm going to use brushes, maybe at the beginning of a tune. Yeah. So, I don't know, if we're going to play, like, I don't know, any tune, any jazz tune, like, Die by Blackbird or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, we might start, one, two, three. So we're just kind of playing along here. You know, I won't play the whole tune. Yeah. But maybe the, uh, the melody, where the, where the singer is doing his thing, I'll uh, play brush brushes, you know, and maybe the bass player will be in too. Yeah. Right. So we're doing that, and then, and then at the solo section, you know, I'll make the switch. You know, and um, that's what we. That's what I usually do for brushes. Like, but how do you know how to do that? How do I know? Is that just experience, or is that someone yelling at you, brushes, sticks? Uh, well, uh, funny you said that. Oscar would, would, he wouldn't yell, but he, yeah. he would say, uh, you know, wood for wood? sticks and yeah. wire for, for brushes. Okay. Or sometimes he'd like, uh, you know, I only did a handful of gigs, but he'd like to sort of, he goes, when, I, when, he, when you see me put my, put my fist down here like that, that means go to sticks. Yeah. So... You know, there's some people who you know, know exactly when they want to hear <laughs> sticks yeah. and brushes. And some people are like, no, no, just build it. Or, you know, if I'm playing with a, um, you know, just I'm playing with like a fast bebop tune. And uh, we, I mean, we just finished like a crazy saxophone solo. And the next solo is the, uh, the bass solo. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll drop down the brushes. So if I'm, you know, just give an example. Like, yeah, well, sure. Yeah. K Casey is uh, watching live. Uh, she said she just listened to Tango Palace. Oh, well, okay. That's the one from that's, your that's, album. That's the one, yeah. Okay, so they're already listening to it, which is a brush song. Yes, that's, a, that's a brush thing, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, would you ever use brushes or choose a different stick like that? Maybe uh, people, I think, right away associate brushes with lower dynamic. Would you ever choose to use brushes for a higher dynamic? Um, yeah, sure. For sure. Uh, let, me, let me think here. Like I've used it in a pop setting. Like they can only be so loud, right, unfortunately. Right. But it's but kind they, of. They still can be quite intense at, at times. Yeah. It, like I was, you know, I w was touring with George Michael the last couple of years. Yeah. And uh, I, I used brushes. Uh, we actually covered a Rufus Rainwright tune called "Going to a Town." Yeah. And I played a lot of brushes on that, and it was just like a, you know, I was trying to be as fat as possible, yeah. you know, but the, the, it really translated in a, in a big arena. And it was just, you know, I can... So it, it, it is possible. I think in order to make them sound big, I have to play less. Yeah. You know, otherwise it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. That's cool. But I can use that, you know, I, I like to crash on them. They're great in the studio. Yeah. Um, you know, if maybe the producer wants to hear, you know, more of a, he wants to hear the backbeat and he wants some light time. He doesn't quite want a shaker, doesn't want to stick on the hi-hat, so maybe I'll be like, you know, just, you know, just so musical. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. 
Awesome. So do you have that song or a brush song that you're going to play? Yeah, yeah. I was going to just... See it, I see it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'll get to it. I was going to play a little something out front of it just, okay. to, just to demonstrate a couple yeah. other cool brush Anything you want, man. Sounds. Okay, yeah. all right. Cool. So, but yeah, I'll definitely uh, <laughs> trigger and make sure I hit the right track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bring up Sugar Bones again. Like, oh, I don't like it all. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, Very, very good. Yeah, people are loving it. Um, okay, we got we have tons of uh, tons of questions coming and stuff, so I just got to try and manage our time. Here. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, yeah let me. <laughs> I, I want you to play more. That's why. Okay. So let's quickly have uh, talk a little about practicing. Okay. And and, uh, and then we we'll hopefully get into more songs and then some uh, questions. All right. Cool. So um, this is something I was talking to you a little bit about you know before lesson started. Practicing uh, musical drumming or practicing becoming more musical. Uh, can you do that in a practice room, or is the only way to do that is with musicians or in the studio? No, uh, no, you can do it in the practice room. I did a lot of stuff. I'm trying to think when I used to, well, I still practice, but yeah, when I had a lot, lot of time. Yeah. Probably not as much anymore. It's tough. So much. A lot of travel. So yeah, you kinda, exactly. You're going to have to sort of uh, practice in, on planes and yeah. a hotel room, you know, on the phone book. But yeah, um, yeah I used to, you know, just your. Your typical exercise is like maybe syncopation, where you're sort of playing along with exercises and stuff like yeah. that. I like to play along with music. You know, I'll, I'll take one of my favorite records. Like if I'm playing uh, sl slow swing, like one of my favorite jazz records is Coltrane plays the blues. Yeah. You know, with Elvin Jones playing drums. 
And if I'm playing a, um, like an exercise, like a, you f I'm, I'm assuming everyone's kind of familiar with syncopation. Yes. Blow, oh, yes. Right? Yeah, so yeah. I know I think it's like the famous. Uh, yeah, Ted, yeah, Ted Reyes. Most, most of our students probably have that. And we also have lots of, uh, lots of lessons on that. We have like 400 lessons. Oh, there. really? OK. Yeah, so, so yeah, so if we take like the, um, I don't know, I think it's page 37, exercise yeah. one, where it's like one, two, three, four. So I'll, I'll, maybe I'll play along with it like. Uh, and I'll, you know, and I'll, maybe I'll play with the foot and then, yeah. you know. You so know. add the different comp and using. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I'll play that along with the, you know, with various tempos along with records that I like and just try to keep the, you know, just try to yeah. keep it all together. It's not easy sometimes, but then, you know, I'll take the same thing and I'll, maybe I'll try to play the syncopation feel on the hi-hat versus a backbeat groove. Like. helps me like that kind of helps me free up this hand like yeah. when, you know because sometimes uh, I used to have a habit of really when I'm playing on the hi-hat I used to really anchor myself on the hi-hat and that was like the time yeah. so I've by doing like syncopation I've learned to sort of um, really let go of that and let you know let this anchor the groove and let everything just keep everything kind of dancing yeah each like real independence just keep everything dancing and it's uh, it really helps so and also when you're playing along with music you know, listen to the form. Make sure know where you are in the music at all times. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'll do that. Or um, let me know if I'm getting off topic. Here. No, no, it's but, good. Okay, it's good, yeah. I'll do that. Or um, you know, maybe I'll take a, a five beat figure. You know, I'll, maybe I'll take the first bar of syncopation and the first beat of the second bar, and I'll turn it into a five beat figure. Okay. And maybe I'll play that against a blues. And so just, how how would you do that? Can, can you try it for us? Okay, yeah. Let me take a figure. Let's take uh, I don't know. We'll take a dotted quarter note, okay, and then uh, an eighth note tied to a quarter note, and then two eighth notes. So, okay. uh, and then the rest. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, one. one. one two, three, four, five. Right. So if I'm playing a blues. I gave the wrong rhythm. We'll do a yeah. quarter note, two eighth notes tied to a chord note, okay. and two eighth notes tied to another chord note. So, right. so, so it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So you know, I'll do that against the rhythm, you know, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll break it up with um, triplets in the, in the left hand, like. Yeah. You know, and just, you know, it, it lines up every five bars. But yeah. it's cool to do that against the 12 bar slow blues yeah. and, and really learn it, you know, really, it, it helps you really anchor where you are. That way, when you come back to just playing 4-4, four, four, you'd be like, oh, this is, this is easy. You know? Yeah. So I'll do that with fives, seven beat figures. I used to do all that kind of stuff. Uh, I used to practice, well, I still do practice really slow. Yeah. You know, um, I studied with Jim Blackley and when I was living in Toronto. And, you know, my ride cymbal, Technique started at 40 beats a minute. Okay. You know. Wow. And uh, really learning to uh, live within those spaces of time. You know, where we tend to fall asleep, and yeah. you know, that's how we kind of end up rushing or dragging or whatever. So let's really kind of be like. You know, that, that's you know. That's that's hard. That's. It's hard, and, yeah. I, and I think that was probably not even 
40. That was probably like a little faster than 40. Maybe, so. I don't know. I was just started bobbing my head and I was off time. Oh, oh okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know. Yeah, and, that's that's challenging. Man. Yeah, it's trouble. And, and yeah. this like, internal subdividing and all that kind of stuff. Cool. But that's a lot of, that was a lot of the basis of my practicing, like playing along yeah. with tunes, playing really slow tempos, playing really fast tempos and just yeah. kind of, you know, get that work out. And then when you play music, you just, you don't really think about any of those things. Right. Cool, yeah, so you guys, it's the syncopation book, like he said, uh, practicing time, yeah. uh, practice, obviously practicing the dynamically and stuff like that, and then playing to a lot of music yes. with using these different rhythms. So I think that's great. It, um, and it's fun to hear how you practice becoming oh, yeah. a better musician, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, I think, you know, I like to practice, I should also say, I practice with a metronome, yeah. but then I practice without one too, because I don't want to get Sometimes I can become dependent on the click if I'm like practicing something. So I'm like, you know yeah. what? Let me just play it without the click here. Yeah. And uh, I tape myself, tape myself a lot, you know, with the click and without the click, and see if I can tell the difference. And yeah. Or play along with one of my favorite tunes. Yeah. You know, maybe I have the tunes in the headphones, and I'll tape myself so when I listen back, I just hear the drums and just to, just to hear what's happening. And yeah. You know, because you're, you know, at the end of the day, I think I'm my own worst critic. So, Everyone is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can sort of, yeah. That was a lot of the preparation, you know. Cool. Um, uh, okay, well, we have tons of questions, so if you sure. do you want to play another track, and then I'll kind of get all the questions prepared, then we'll do some of those? Sure. Maybe I'll play a, like a swing thing yeah. here. Uh, this is an arrangement of uh, Rock With You, okay. which is on Michael Jackson's Off The Wall, so I'll just do that. It's a little, here we go. It's three minutes. Is that enough time? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> all right, let me find it here. Thank you. And you guys, uh, there's, before we started this uh, 
Les and I said, are you going to play the song South on Broadway from his album? He's like, oh, I didn't get it. Didn't get ready. But that song is so killer. Uh, and uh, you got to listen to it. And so get, get the album on iTunes. Just search Mark McLean and check out South on Broadway as well. Cool. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, we didn't talk part of this before, <laughs> at all before this lesson. So, yeah, it's no big deal. Okay, uh, some questions? Sure. Okay, this is from Scotty Aldrich. He says, uh, awesome insights. Um, for Mark, any opinions on match script versus traditional for jazz? Does it really matter, just for looks, etc.? Um, it, uh, it doesn't really matter. Like, honestly, I started match grip, yeah. and, um, you know, I, I, I still kind of move between matched and traditional, depending on how... Uh, for feel. For yeah. feel, yes. Yeah. You know, like, I, I prefer the traditional grip for the brushes, actually, because I, I, I don't know, it just... Maybe it's just the angle that I, that I personally keep the snare drum. Yeah. But, you know, one of my favorite jazz drummers is Eric Harland. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, a, he's a match grip player. Mm -hmm. You know, but then you'll see uh, Brian Blade with the traditional grip. And I think it's, it's different. Like, you know, you want to be comfortable and just make sure um, that you can just do what you want to do on the drums, you know. Cool. But, that, yeah, people said, oh, yeah, match grip. That, that just looks weird sometimes. But, but if I can't play traditional grip that well... <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to go with the match group. So. Yeah, cool. Okay, another one from Scotty. He says, maybe you already mentioned this, but are you still actively playing piano? Um, well, I write a lot, so the, the piano is my uh, primary composition instrument. Yeah. Um, and actually, on the, on the new record that's coming out in a couple months, I, I do play piano on that. So I guess the, cool. the, the answer is yes. Cool. A uh, question from X Hammer. He says, Mark, great playing. Is this your normal drum setup? Uh, Actually, yes, it is. Actually, lately I have added a 16-inch floor tom. Yeah. Because I just... Just for fun. There's nothing like... Yeah, the... Boom! <laughs> you know, that's it. <laughs> <I hear> you, <laughs> so, but yeah, that, 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 this is pretty much... Yeah, these are the exact sizes yeah. that, I, that I use. Okay, And cool. uh, that's, this is the setup, yes. Yeah, and you guys, we had the, the... I've had the pleasure of working with Yamaha Canada, Sean Brown, Ken Infanti... Uh, awesome guys, and they're the Yamaha, uh, Sean is the Yamaha Canada rep, and he kind of put us in contact with Mark and said, you got to check this guy out, and he, they brought them out here. So they are responsible for, for uh, setting this up for you. And so definitely support them. Please. Uh, yes. Yamaha drums, there's a new live custom, this is an O custom, they have the stage custom, and then all their electronic models. But oh, yeah. great company and uh, great people behind them. Yeah. So Great drums. Great yeah. drums. Uh, okay, another one from X Hammer. He says, did you ever practice playing different different drum dynamics much. So I guess he's talking about like, uh, well, did you practice dynamics? Practice dynamics? Yeah. Or is it something that just happened? You know what? It's funny. Um, I, I would say in the beginning, I, you know, just, you're so excited to just be hitting drums. Yeah. Not really. But when, once you get, you know, when you get hired to do that cocktail gig or something, you know, you have to play quietly yeah. in the corner. You know, I, I, that's when I started to really learn how to try to play quietly and like mm -hmm. try to, you know, keep the intensity of a groove without having to go to brushes or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a cool thing to practice quietly and try to bring that sense, you know, like, um, cause I can show it on the ride cymbal. Like, yeah, whatever, just kinda, yeah. Maybe just try to like, maybe find that that spot in the snare that's like it's gonna mm -hmm. sing without me having to really hit it. So. I think the whole thing is not to lose the intensity. Sure. Even if you're playing quietly, you want to make sure that you can hear all the elements happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and just make sure that the person at the back of the room can like really hear this without having to really, you know, we want them to feel it more than to hear it, I guess. But, yeah, that's great. I, mean, so. I think that you're exactly right. Like, you want the just because you're playing quiet, you don't want to lose all intensity. No. You want it to still feel like there's energy there if that's what you're trying to achieve. With oh the yeah. Music. Well, I remember uh, watching. Uh, 
Elvin Jones play, and you know, he had this awesome yeah. champagne sparkle uh, Yamaha kit, with yeah. his, you know, with his signature snare, and he was playing a ballad. You know, it's a quiet ballad, but at the same time, the energy is just like yeah. pushing you back in your seat. Yeah. So that's what, you, yeah, you want to propel. You want to propel. That's great. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, keep going. Um, this is from Casey, and she says it's a two-part question. Okay. Uh, and we kind of just talked about this, but maybe we didn't talk about the symbols. She says, please let us know what model Yamaha kit and what symbols you are using. Okay. Well, this, this is the new old customs, which yeah. are amazing. Yeah. You know, like, I didn't, I didn't really sit down. I just sat down at these and started playing today, which is, yeah. which is normally what happens when I sit down at a Yamaha kit, to be quite honest. But, yeah, yeah it's great, great. And... Yeah. Um, and the snare drum? The snare drum. This is a, this is a maple custom. And uh, I guess I don't have to take it off. You no, have, they can you see, have, they Okay, see, great. Yeah. This is a maple custom. This is, a, this is actually the Yamaha drum I've had longest. Mm -hmm. you know, I was telling Sean this morning, it was, well, Sean knows, but it was pink when it, because it's, it's got the, uh, the vintage finish and it, yeah. it gets darker every year. So and, ages. Yes. This is like my number one snare, any situation. Pop, yeah. funk, jazz. This thing's coming with me. Cool. So, um, it's beautiful. Awesome. And then the cymbal setup? Cymbal setup, okay. All Zildjian cymbals. Yeah. Um, this is one of the original Constantinopoles. It's a 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some rivets in there. Actually, this, there, was, there were two, and uh, one, one fell out, so I'll have to <laughs> fix that. But <laughs> this is one of my, uh, this is probably the first Zildjian cymbal I purchased. Yeah. And then uh, these are some old... Uh, these are old new beat hats, okay. actually. And then up here we have a, an 18 inch custom fast crash, yeah. which is a great, you know, I love the, uh, it's a beautiful sounding symbol and it just, the decay is like, just kind of disappears and yeah. leaves room for the rest of the music to breathe. And uh, this is a 22 inch prototype, but it's actually the, uh, this is a prototype of the overhammered ride Zildjian. So. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and the Casey also says, if you can think back to when you were first learning jazz, what is the one thing that you studied that helped you the most? One thing that I studied that helped me the most, I think just a lot of listening. Yeah. You know, a lot of listening. I think the two drummers that I was listening to when I first started playing jazz were Elvin Jones. Mm -hmm. you know, I mentioned the Cold Train plays the blues, but then I, I got into uh, I heard Tony Williams play, and there's a record called uh, Miles Davis, My Funny Valentine. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a live concert from uh, Carnegie Hall, in, I think it's like 1964 in New York, and they are just playing some of the like just blazing fast jazz. Yeah, you know, and I, I think this just listening to it, listening to the sound, and getting that sound in your into your mind's ear. Yeah, because a lot of it, so much of it is touch with jazz. You know, mm -hmm. like when I hit a a ride cymbal, like I'm referencing, I'm trying to reference like what. Well, I, I, right now I just kind of do my thing, but you know when I tried to lift some Elvin Jones stuff, I would be thinking like how Elvin would hit the cymbal and yeah. is he doing it like that? Is that the right? He had that kind of like really loose triplet. You know, if I'm hearing when I think of Tony Williams, I'm thinking of like that really kind of. tight sound, so yeah. you kind of, I mean, basically you kind of um, try to build that vocabulary, yeah. you know, or just or build that encyclopedia in, in your mind's ear, and then eventually you kind of just end up sounding like yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think listening is really important, you know, the jazz, the greats, you know, Papa Joe Jones, Philly Joe Jones, Max Roach, mm -hmm. and there's the modern guys, like my favorite is, is Brian Blade, you know, he was uh, kind of a mentor to me when I first moved to New York, and Help me shop for drums in the whole nine yards. <laughs> so this hymn is Gregory Hutchinson, mm -hmm. um, Bill Stewart, and then there's other guys like Kendrick Scott. And there's so many great drummers out yeah. there. But uh, so take notes, everyone. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that before. Take notes and write down all these names and check them out. You know, do some searches. And you can find them on YouTube. I'm sure you can find them on iTunes and different albums that they played on. So oh, yeah, and some of these drummers are leaders as well. You know, yeah, they have their own bands. So cool. Okay, question from Gil uh, Flores. He says, um, though I'm a drummer, my favorite musician is Michelle Camilo. 
Oh, uh, wow. Even though the first time I saw Michelle, Dave Weckl was his drummer. Mark, is your favorite also not a drummer? My favorite musician? Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Putting you on the, putting you on the spot here. <laughs> well, my fav I think my favorite musician of all time is, uh, I would have to say it's Stevie Wonder. And Stevie, you know, obviously is a great vocalist and pianist, but he's also a great drummer. So I think anybody that I like has some sort of, you know, heavy rhythmic thing mm -hmm. happening. So, uh, yeah, I guess I would have to say, I understand what he's saying. Yeah. You know, well, you know, and Michel Camilo, like, I have a feeling he's a great drummer as well because he is so percussive yeah. when he plays. And I know those records, I know those records you're talking about because I, <laughs> I have them too, yeah. you know. And, uh, yeah, so I would, I would have to say, yeah, I guess my favorite uh, musicians are uh, guys who, they're musicians who happen to sing well and happen to play drums well and happen to uh, yeah. cool. write well. Okay, we've got to uh, burn through a few more here. Okay. We're running out of time. This is from John Gill. He says, thanks for a great lesson and lots of inspiration. Can you tell us how you warm up before a gig or practicing on your kit? Warm up, okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Sometimes I'll, I'll just do, um, I usually turn the snare off if I'm going to warm up actually on the drum uh, just so I can hear what I'm doing. But maybe I'll just play, uh, like a press roll is good. Or maybe I'll just do um, like some flams on each hand, like. You know, or I'll play, uh, you know, pair diddles are always good. Or maybe I'll, um, sometimes I have an exercise that on, I do uh, on the drums. I, I'll just play pair diddles with the, and I'll lock the right hand to the, to the, uh, to the right foot. Something like this, stuff like that, just to keep the limbs going, or I'll play eighth note or triplets on the bass drum and maybe mess with the dynamics. Like. Little, little things like that. Um, I'm gonna, you know, since we're done, I'm gonna think of. Eight million things. Oh yeah, of how that, I, that's uh, great. I think that's a well, few, but, yeah. good takeaway. But yeah, the press roll is good because it just, it just, you have to, you have to loosen up for that. Yeah, you know, you really have to get loose and just sort of cool. Yeah. Okay, one more question, and then oh, if if you don't mind, I know we're over time, but do you mind playing a few more no, songs? Not Whatever at all. you got left. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. So this is from Mullet Zuck, which is a great username. He says, <laughs> <laughs> "Great lesson, Mark. I really enjoyed the stick work. And I did as well on the small tom on the second song you played in the beginning." Uh, anyway, can you slow that down and show it? Also, very cool the way you rotate your wrist when you play ghost notes on the snare. Oh, cool. Because people are seeing the overhead and that oh, right, camera yeah. over there, so we're just breaking you apart. Yeah, you guys are seeing <laughs> angles I've never seen before, so that's cool. So maybe if, if you don't mind, just uh, cause, especially because we're running out of time, just quickly demonstrating slowly what you're doing is during the solo section on the high tom. Oh, high tom. Do you remember that? What was the second It was like a, a, you're dragging the stick and oh. pushing it on the top. Yeah, it was kind of, I think I, I, I'll manipulate the head, like. Okay. And I like, I like that dynamic, or that move, that it's called a stick shot. Okay. You know, it's normally done on the, uh, I do it here. It, it, you're kind of uh, creating a talking drum in some way. Yeah. So I, I sometimes I'll do that, and I, I'll get a sound where I go stick, head, and then a hit. Yeah. So I, I, I can't remember what I was doing, because that was like, well, this is great. Yeah. What are you I kind of like that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, or you can, you know, I sometimes I go. Mm. Like just, just to get some. You know, just, uh, I, I experiment a lot when I practice, yeah. right? So. But yeah, I, I just practice hitting it and bringing it off and just see what, see what happens when I, when I do those. You know, when that's, you know, I, I like to study, I, actually one of my first gigs was playing with Jane Bennett, mm -hmm. you know, and we used to have, a, you know, it would be drum set, and then there would be a conga player and a, and a timbale player, and you'd see them do all those. You know, so I, I think I was, when, sometimes when we'd have a tour and we'd only have to take a drummer, I'd be responsible for a lot of those yeah. sounds, so I would try to practice kind of getting that, getting like those different. Those, 
you know, try to, you know, I think that's what that is about, actually, yeah. just sort of channeling that uh, that sound. So I hope that cool. helps, and if, if yeah. not, I'll, no, I'll try to break it down. That's yeah, great. Then. Hey, man, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Out. It's such a pleasure to, to have you here, and you're welcome back anytime. Oh, appreciate it. I love yeah. that. Love Thanks that. to uh, Yamaha guys, Sean and Sean. Ken, and Kyle helped out with uh, sourcing the drum set for this as well. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, do you mind playing, a, a, like, as many more songs as you, you want? You can play it to, for four hours straight if you want. Oh, but, okay. But <laughs> just play as long as you want. I'm going to get out of the room just so I get out of the shot. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, stick around because he's still going to play a few more tracks. Okay, yeah, I'll play, I'll play a couple more. And, just whatever, uh, you, whatever you want. All right. So I just leave when I'm done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll play something in three.
back to me But girl It's been a while Yeah. Uh-huh. 